Welcome back to the Video CPA. It's April 10th, 2021. Tax season, and I am a practicing CPA, and that's why uh, I haven't gotten a video out for a while. But uh, uh, I'm Michael Scott. You've reached Seniors in Action. And today we're going to be talking about uh, understanding cryptocurrency. And uh, I understand that a lot of you people could care less about cryptocurrency, but uh, it is uh, an up-and-coming um, investment opportunity, um, and uh, so you need to know a little bit about it. And some people are probably anxious to know a lot about it. Uh, I was, for example. So uh, let's talk about cryptocurrency a little bit. This is pretty, pretty general. You're not going to see me live on uh, this video today because I don't have room on the slides. Uh, some of these slides are pretty, pretty busy. So. Let's get on with it. Uh, you got the disclaimer. This is our affiliate marketing disclaimer. Uh, so uh, let's kind of introduce cryptocurrency, okay? In 2008, an individual or an organization or a bunch of individuals uh, called Satoshi Nakamoto wrote a white paper called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And then in 2009, Bitcoin was actually uh, introduced. Now, Bitcoin right now sells for about $58,000 a coin. And it said that the first uh, purchase was for a pizza. So that was a very expensive pizza, I have to say. I mean, that's a $58,000 pizza if, you've held, uh, if you'd held your Bitcoin through all these years. And estimates are a lot of people are forecasting that Bitcoin is going to go up much more. Okay. Now one of the th one of the things that was introduced with uh, Bitcoin was uh, blockchain technology, and you need to understand a little bit about block blockchain. Not everything, but blockchain basically is uh, if you think of an Excel spreadsheet and a list of transactions on that Excel spreadsheet. Uh, for let's say a particular currency, uh, the blockchain holds every transaction for that currency that's uh, ever been made. And when that um, Excel spreadsheet is filled up, for example, it is linked to another Excel spreadsheet, and it just keeps uh, it just keeps going. So if you look at uh, the white paper name it says a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system so that means that you know in order to exchange goods or exchange uh, um, money in this case uh, usually we've got a bank that sits in the middle and we write a check or something like that uh, we do have some cash that's peer-to-peer -peer, I guess but uh, uh, but Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer cash system. So it takes out the middleman out of the con uh, conversation. And uh, so it's highly decentralized uh, as opposed to most corporations where they've got uh, central control and a lot of employees. Um, uh, blockchain allows uh, it to be a peer-to-peer -peer transaction, allows it to be decentralized. Now, there are some cryptocurrencies that aren't decentralized, but uh, the majority of them are. And so it's a peer-to-peer -peer cash system, and it's a decentralized type system. And that, uh, that uh, gives cryptocurrency a, um, an, an advantage. It gives blockchain an advantage in many situations. And so you find that uh, there's a lot of uh, businesses today that may in the future be by, uh, be built on blockchain. So uh, uh, blockchain is uh, very adaptable, for example, for something like uh, Airbnb or for um, uh, Ticketmaster or for something like that and a lot of other applications. So uh, blockchain, uh, even though uh, Bitcoin was introduced in 2008 with blockchain, there's a lot of other people that want to use that technology now. And uh, there's over a thousand, maybe two thousand uh, uh, cryptocurrency coins or tokens out there, and uh, using blockchain. So it's uh, it is an up and coming uh, 
way to uh, transfer and negotiate money. All right, let's look at the IRS, the way the IRS looks at it. I mean, you can, you can look at a particular coin and you can say, well, this is a currency, okay? Um, but really, Bitcoin and Ethereum and some of the other coins uh, have properties of a currency and they have properties of just, say, a stock, okay, an ownership property, if you're investing in a corporation. Both of those type of things. And uh, so the IRS looked at this and they, they said, well, it's not a currency, so we're not going to uh, have um, exchange uh, gains and losses on it because uh, it's not a currency. Now, some people w will define it as a currency in the uh, cryptocurrency space in their, uh, in their own words, but the IRS does not define it as a currency. So... Uh, basically, they say it's a digital representation of value that functions as a medium exchange. All right, so um, that's what they're thinking, and uh, maybe what drove them to this is they could get more tax dollars if they defined it as a property. So it is defined as a property. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and so this is, comes from IRS Notice 2014-21. Uh, that means it came out in 2014. And this was the first uh, attempt at saying anything about uh, cryptocurrency. The IRS actually calls it virtual currency. But, um, and in the second paragraph, they're basically saying that, hey, this could result in a tax liability. And up to that time, nobody was uh, paying tax on it, or very few, probably. Uh, There's no requirements for them to do it, uh, or there may have been a requirement, but they didn't know how it was taxed, and so they just uh, didn't report it. But after 2014, uh, it is a reportable time transaction. I'll get into the tax situation later. All right, let's look at crypto exchanges, because uh, uh, crypto is actually sold on exchanges, and that's similar to a, a stock exchange, like... Um, you know, the New York Stock Exchange or some other stock exchange. Uh, but uh, crypto has two types of exchanges. One is called a fiat exchange. And if you're uh, familiar with the word fiat, it just means that it's paper money that's not backed up by anything. So the U.S. dollar, for example, used to be backed up by gold or silver. Uh, now it's not back, backed up by anything. So most of the currencies in the United States are not backed up other than by good faith of that particular government. And so they're called fiat currencies. And uh, unfortunately, that's what allows for a great deal of, uh, of uh, inflation because uh, governments tend to print more and more money to cover their uh, expenditures. So we have uh, cryptos that are fiat exchanges. What that means is you can exchange your US dollars or other dollars uh, for cryptocurrency. You can go in and buy cryptocurrency with uh, your US dollars. The other type of exchange is a crypto exchange. And a crypto exchange, uh, by being a crypto exchange, you, you uh, escape some of the regulations that uh, are put on the fiat exchanges. So crypto exchanges actually change um, cryptocurrency for cryptocurrency. And so you might buy some Bitcoin, for example, and you might decide that you uh, want to have uh, uh, a different cryptocurrency. And uh, that cryptocurrency is not available on a fiat exchange, and so it's available on a crypto exchange. So you exchange your Bitcoin for another cryptocurrency, all right? And that's a, a crypto exchange. So... Uh, a little bit more difficult. Uh, first, you've got to buy Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever the exchange works in. And then you've got to go in and exchange that for uh, the amount of uh, the different cryptocurrency that you want. Okay, Not all cri cryptocurrencies are available on all exchanges, and that's uh, important, to, uh, important to know. So when you're trying to buy something, you need to, need to make sure that you're going to an exchange that has that... Uh, a particular currency on it. 
All right, we talked about uh, fiat exchanges. Coinbase is a very big one, and it's a good one. Gemini is one. Kraken is one. There's many others, okay? Um, crypto exchanges, uh, Exchange, Bitrix, Binance, uh, Shapeshift, Exodus, um, all these can uh, actually change crypto for crypto. So uh, uh, just be aware that there are different types of exchanges and you may have to be, uh, if you get into this arena, you may have to be signed up with uh, several different exchanges. It's, uh, you get an account with them much like you get an account with your stockbroker like uh, Edward Jones or TD Ameritrade or Schwab or something like that. All right. Also in the crypto space, you have the concept of a wallet. Now, wallets are fairly simple to the wallet that you may have in your back pocket or in your purse. But uh, wallets in this case do not hold actual crypto coins. Uh, they hold the, uh, the passwords and what's called seed phrases for those crypto coins. Okay. And they can be held, uh, you can have your wallet, a uh, desktop wallet that's on a computer, that's online, it's on the internet. You can have a mobile wallet that's on the internet. You can have what's called a hardware wallet, which would be more familiar, more similar to a USB stick, only it's uh, got more protection on it. So a hardware wallet is a piece of actual hardware that you keep your, your uh, passwords and your uh, keys, your public keys, and your seed phrases. And then when you need your crypto, you can actually go in and uh, plug that into your computer and uh, exchange your crypto or sell it, whatever. Then you have paper wallets that are just written down and you have to keep those uh, somewhere safe. And certainly a hardware wallet, you have to keep it safe. Uh, and then you've got, uh, uh, let's talk about hot and cold wallets, okay? Because uh, hot wallets are those that are connected to the internet. So your desktop wallet, your mobile wallet in this case, would be on, on the internet and um, connected to the internet. And the reason they're called hot is because uh, um, they're a little bit less secure than the cold wallets. Now, the companies that uh, have these wallets try very hard to keep them secure. And for the most part, they've done a good job. Uh, some of your exchanges also have their own wallet built into the exchange, uh, so um, uh, they keep pretty they keep good security on those wallets as well. But an online wallet is always subject to uh, uh, somebody trying to hack it. So your your most secure wallets are your uh, offline wallets, your cold wallets, which are your hardware wallet, your paper wallet, and your paper wallets, okay? Um, but the majority of people use hot wallets, use the desktop wallet, the mobile wallet, use uh, internet-based wallets, okay? Now, you need to be aware that wallets do not handle all cryptocurrencies. So most are specific to which cryptocurrencies they hold. You might find a wallet that holds 100 cryptocurrencies, but like I said, there's over 1,000 cryptocurrencies out there. So, um, and then you might find a wallet that only holds one cryptocurrency. So when you're looking at wallets, you need to make sure that it's, it will hold the type of crypt cryptocurrency that you're interested in uh, buying. All right, some of the popular crypt cryptocurrencies, and these are just, there's just four of them here, all right? Uh, Bitcoin is uh, the big daddy in the marketplace. Ethereum is very big. Uh, Litecoin is, uh, you know, fairly big, and Bitcoin Cash is, is pretty big. And these are, these are just four, and like I say, there's over a thousand. So, cryptocurrencies have very different characteristics and purposes. Uh, some are like, and I'm just reading this from Eric Wade, uh, Crypto Capital, who is, uh, runs Crypto Capital for Stansbury Research. Some are more like businesses, some are like gambling services, some provide the investor or token holder with some form of utility like decentralized digital storage or uh, identity verification. Uh, at the moment, all crypto assets tend to get lumped into the cryptocurrency bucket, 
but that's wildly misleading. Okay, so with each one of these cryptocurrencies, uh, you know, you might have a group of people that form a project, and that project is to uh, improve uh, the blockchain or improve security uh, in the cryptocurrency space. And so when they undertake that project, they, they need funding, and so they will come up with a cryptocurrency, and they will go out and sell that uh, on an exchange, and uh, in return, they get the money to do the project. Now, a lot of these cryptocurrencies don't even exist, so you have to be very careful. But uh, And some uh, never make it in the marketplace, but um, a lot of them do. So um, just be aware that they can be for separate purposes. I mean, they can be for a project. They can be basically a, a company that uh, is just uh, trying to sell goods and services and instead of... Tr uh, going through the, all the effort of selling stock and stuff on, and being listed on the New York Stock Exchange, it's much easier for them to have a cryptocurrency. And um, so um, uh, just be aware when you're looking at particular cryptocurrencies that they can have uh, different purposes. They don't all fit into the same bucket. All right. So if you want to invest in this and... Uh, I'm talking to seniors here. If there's any young people, uh, they may have already invested in it. And some of you seniors may be invested in it. I'm invested in, in cryptos, uh, and I'm 71 years old. But uh, you may not be interested in this at all. But uh, if you are, you have to go to an exchange and set up an account. And like I say, you may have to set up an account in a couple of different exchanges. Uh, sometimes you have to set up a wallet. Uh, some exchanges incorporate their own wallet. An exchange like Coinbase, for example, incorporates its own wallet, so you don't need a separate wallet. Uh, the only reason you want, might want it is that you can keep, uh, you can keep your crypto uh, separate from the exchange. So if anything ever happens to the exchange, you've got your crypto. Uh, so um, that's the reason. So a lot of people, a lot of professional crypto traders have their own wallet. They don't use the exchange wallets, but uh, like I say, wallets, you need to make sure that they will cover the crypto that you want to be invested in, that they will hold it. All right, and then uh, once you get your wallet set up, uh, you transfer money into your wallet. Uh, so you have to start with the fiat exchange. And so Coinbase is a fiat exchange, or Gemini, and uh, transfer money in there, and then from there, uh, and, you, and you do that through either a wire transfer or just a bank transfer, or you can send a check. But once the money's in your wallet, then you can purchase your first cryptocurrency. So uh, uh, that's, that's the way it works. It's much like buying stock in a brokerage firm, but uh, it's a little bit easier, actually. So uh, the question, should you invest in this? Uh, it's up to you. I mean, this is, many of these are very risky. Um, and uh, you could lose all your money. On the other hand, you could make a great deal of money in, uh, in this. And uh, so it depends on what your, your risk style is. And uh, it'll be right for some people, wrong for others. And uh, normally you're not going to be dealing with your normal broker because they've been kind of slow to get into this space and this space is still fairly new even though uh, it's growing quickly and I know some of the brokerage firms uh, Robinhood for example is uh, now allowing cryptocurrency TD Ameritrade is uh, is coming up with uh, an opportunity I think in the future to buy cryptocurrency through them um, so um, but for the most part, your broker's not going to know much about it, and it's not going to be able to sell it to you. Certainly, Edward Jones, a very conservative brokerage firm, would not sell cryptocurrency to you. So uh, keep that in mind. All right, let's look at how this stuff is taxed, okay? And we said earlier that it's taxed as a property, all right? That means it's taxed similar to stocks, bonds. It's taxed similar to a piece of equipment. Uh, except there's no depreciation or anything on it. Uh, but um, uh, when the IRS said it was taxed as a property, they really 
did away with a lot of questions and a lot more guidance that they would have to uh, give us about cryptocurrency because once we know that it's a property, uh, we've got years and years of experience on how properties are um, handled. And so uh, you've got gains and losses on cryptocurrencies, okay, on investment, and that's handled like a gain or a loss on stock. You fill out Schedule D and um, so uh, that's pretty straightforward, all right? Um, now, if you receive cryptocurrency paid as wages, and I just saw the other day that some of the uh, athletes were, had the option of being paid in cryptocurrency, um, which is interesting. So if you're paid in cryptocurrency as wages, uh, it's considered ordinary income. Whereas if it's investment, as long as you meet the holding period like stock, it could be uh, a long-term gain versus a short-term gain. Certainly a short-term gain is ordinary income, but a long-term gain has uh, got a tax rate that uh, is better than that. So, uh, And then you can also receive cryptocurrency for the payment of services. Like uh, that pizza vendor that sold that first pizza, uh, if he still has that coin around, um, uh, he's made a lot of money on that pizza. But... Uh, uh, in that case, I mean, you have to value the cryptocurrency on the date that you received it. So uh, um, it's going to be considered ordinary income. If he ever sells that cryptocurrency, he's going to have a huge, uh, huge amount of income on that uh, that deal. So uh, um, anyway, that's uh, those are the three alternatives that you can look at, the three ways that you can receive cryptocurrency. Some people uh, actually work in the cryptocurrency arena and uh, kind of uh, um, evaluate the blockchain and make sure the blockchain is uh, all the uh, entities are correct, are, are the transactions are correct. So they're validating the blockchain. Those people are called miners. They receive cryptocurrency as a result of being miners. So uh, if you're a contract labor, for example, and you're doing plumbing for somebody and uh, she gives you uh, an Ethereum coin, uh, you've got, uh, uh, that's, that's a way to receive uh, taxable income. Uh, so uh, uh, most of you haven't done this yet unless you're investing in the uh, arena. Let's look at a taxation of hard forks. So the IRS, you know, in 2014 came out with their first ruling on uh, cryptocurrency. And then they decided that that ruling doesn't cover everything. And uh, so in, in the crypto arena, there is a term called hard forks. There's also one called soft forks, but we're just going to talk about hard forks today. So a hard fork is when a particular cryptocurrency actually splits and another currency is formed and that other currency then adopts its own blockchain and has its own blockchain going forward and its own history. So uh, this has happened, well this happens quite a bit, but uh, Bitcoin for example actually had a hard fork and it uh, divided into Bitcoin Cash and so sometimes when that happens uh, you receive additional units of the new currency. And uh, if you don't receive uh, the new units, if they're not in your hand and not controllable, it's not taxable. And that's what the IRS said in this revenue ruling in 2019. If a hard fork occurs and you do not have control over the cryptocurrency, then it's not taxable. But once you get control over the cryptocurrency, then you've got a taxable problem. So uh, that's the way hard forks are dealt with, and you're not going to see a hard Well, if you invest in this stuff, you may see a hard fork, but there's not a lot of them. Uh, but um, just know that hard forks could very well be taxable. All right, so this, this is your 1040 form. And... Uh, the IRS is trying to get their hands around cryptocurrency because a lot of it's slipping through the fact of the cracks. And so this is the 2020 return. 
and you'll see and this is going to be on here forever you can see uh, outlined in red down there at any time during 2020 did you receive sell send exchange or otherwise acquire any financial interest in a virtual currency so basically they're asking hey do you have any bitcoin did you buy any did you sell any did you exchange any did you receive it through a hard fork but uh, if you've done that you got to answer yes and then if you answer yes and you don't have any uh, taxable transaction on the tax return and it is possible not to have a tax a taxable transaction I mean you might buy some um, but uh, if you if you buy something and you haven't sold it yet well there's no taxable transaction but you still have to answer yes and so the IRS uh, uh, is going to come looking if you answer yes and you don't have anything reportable on your tax return uh, they're probably going to come looking and say hey what did you do and how come uh, you, how come you're not reporting any tax on your tax return so this question has to be answered on your tax return and so you need to tell your tax preparer or when you prepare your own tax you need to answer it now reporting most of you that are investing uh, in a stock exchange like Merrill Lynch or whoever it might be receive at the end of the year what's called a 1099B and the 1099B basically records your interest and your dividends and your capital gains and losses on stock sales or on bond exchanges or whatever it might be uh, you're not going to get that with cryptocurrency the IRS has not mandated that these exchange exchanges issue you a consolidated statement for cryptocurrency so it's going to be a little bit more a little bit harder for you to prepare your tax return in this case um, so just be aware that you're not going to get this big uh, consolidated 1099 from your cryptocurrency exchange what they do and this is coinbase this is uh, what they report so uh, coinbase uh, these are transactions back in December of uh, 2020 okay and um, uh, coinbase basically gives you a transaction report so that you can come up with your gain or loss on cryptocurrency okay now this is going to be this would be if you if you're dealing back and forth with a lot of cryptocurrency this would be a pretty challenging uh, thing to put together to get your taxes right and if you give this to a CPA you're going to get charged a lot of money so um, in order for him to figure out what your gains and losses are uh, so um, what we've done, what has been done, uh, is that uh, companies have come up with uh, um, cryptocurrency trackers for tax purposes. And so I have, I used a um, particular product that was uh, Coinbase actually is affiliated with Coin, called Coin Tracker. And it it will go through your transactions and it will divvy them up and decide what your gain is or what your loss is for the year okay so it makes it much easier and I, I would uh, advise you to get something like this uh, they're not that much money and uh, you know you can do some stuff for free on them but uh, uh, I'll be talking a little bit more about these things in my video for the video CPA uh, uh, YouTube channel uh, probably this week and uh, uh, some of the various uh, software that's available for that so if you're interested but uh, I hope this kind of fills you in on uh, cryptocurrency that you've learned a little bit more about it uh, and even if you don't want to get into this space um, uh, at least you need a background as, as to what it's about so you can talk knowledgeably with your your friends and stuff so uh, thanks for watching good to have you here i'll be back with another video soon